How fast does your draw need to be? Hello everyone, Dylan Schumacher, Sudden Dial Defense. And I'm gonna think about this today, uh, the, the speed of your draw, right? How fast does your draw really need to be? And I think that question is somewhat, uh, I don't wanna say irrelevant, but, but maybe relative. So we live in an age with a wealth of body cam footage, right? It, it really is a gift that we have all of this body cam footage, both from like police officers, which is the predominant where we get most of it, and even now from like stuff like the war in Ukraine or Israel, you're getting helmet cam or body cam footage of guys in actual combat, right? And so there's a lot that we can learn from this body cam footage. The fact that we have first person viewpoints of gunfights uh, all the world over in all kinds of different circumstances is a wealth of knowledge that we have not had before. And one of the things that we can, we can tease out from that or we can learn from that is draw speed. How important really is it to have a good draw speed? And what does that mean? Now in all of the body cam footages that I've ever seen, uh, the cops either had their guns out or got them out in time, right? I don't know if I've ever seen one, and I'm sure there is one, so maybe we can, you can link it below and we can discuss. Um, of, of where a cop didn't get his gun out in time, right? Uh, most of the time, these guys are getting their guns out in time. And when it's go time, the gun is coming out fast enough. Now, I don't know how trained everybody is. We, we know that in general, police officers are, are not trained enough on their guns. Uh, but, you know, in general, everybody's still getting their guns out in time. So how, what does that mean for and How fast does your drug really need to be? I think that we can get caught up sometimes in getting a really fast draw time and really working that timer down, right? Getting that one second, that point eight. In the intro there, you know, you can be your own judge whether I hit that point eight, right? My hit's probably questionable, but you know, can we push it that far? Sure, okay. Is that really gonna make the difference someday for your life? Maybe, maybe not, and I think if we're playing the odds, my bet would be no. No, it's not. Um, you know, a one and a half second draw, a two second draw is probably just as uh, effective on the practical landscape for your defense and you're getting your pistol out in time as a 0.8 second draw. So the question is then, well, do, do we need to work on the draw that much? Should the draw really be 0.8? And here's why I would say, yes, it actually should be in your dry fire and in your practice, it should be 0.8. Now, why would I say that? I, I would say that because when you meet real world stuff, right? You're stressed out, you're tired, you're looking at your kid, you're not paying attention. But like when I get the timer on, right? I'm primed up, I'm primed up, I'm ready, I'm waiting for that timer. The timer goes, the gun comes out, and I'm, and I'm gonna go to work, right? But in real life, it never works that way. I'm not gonna square up on a guy primed up and I'm just ready, right? And then I'm gonna go for the gun, it's not gonna happen. So what I'm doing is I'm working on, on the small part, right? I'm working on the small part of building an excess amount of skill. I'm working on the skill from getting the gun to go from the holster to where I need it to go. That's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to build up that excess skill to get the gun out. And you know, when I was first starting to get into guns and shooting and stuff, we do stuff like we try to surprise each other with the timer, right? And we'd say, shoot ready, and then we delay it, you know, we kind of try to mess with each other. And that's fun and that's cute, but that actually defeats the point of what you're trying to do. You want them to be ready. You want them to be hey, sure ready, and you're gonna beat them at the same time every time. So they're anticipating they're getting ready. Because what are we doing? We're doing one thing. It's like a it's like a preacher curl, right? You're working one muscle, one tiny little muscle. All we're working on is as quick as we can to get the gun from here to here, right? That's it. That's all we're working on. Just that one skill to get the gun out as soon as I need it. That's it. That's all we're doing. So. Working on that skill, and of course, actuating the trigger, right? Uh, that's, that's an important part of the, the draw the first shot. But that's the skill we're working on. So we, we refine that, we put it on a timer. We put it on a timer, why? Because it's measurable, and we can measure our improvement. If you're not gonna measure it, you're not gonna improve, I can guarantee you, okay? So as you measure it, you start to crunch that time down, you start to put that second beat lower and lower, you're, you're increasing your speed to try to make the time, okay? So we're building up that extra level of skill. I heard it called once uh, a surplus level of skill, and I heard that by uh, Scott Jelinski, uh, and I think that's a great term. I really like that. It really helps codify that idea. You're building up the surplus level of skill so that when it's go time, 
it's there. The, the skills are there. And if in real life, you know, if you're drawing a point eight in practice, and in real life it doubles to a 1.6, we're gonna take that, right? That, that gives you twice as much time, and you're still gonna be able to get the gun out and get to work, that's a win. We're gonna take that. Because we are assuming that when your day comes, you will not be under the best of circumstances, right? You will be distracted, you will be behind the power curve, you're gonna have to uh, react. Now, yeah, I should have situational awareness and blah, 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 but that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about your less than optimal day. You are just getting over a, a you know, 102 fever, okay? And you know, you got, still gotta go, you still gotta work. So we want to refine that skill as best we can, get as tight of a draw time as we actually can, so that we have that surplus level of skill. Now, this is both comforting and not comforting. Comforting because, hey, you got that surplus level of skill that you can, you can feel pretty confident in your skill abilities, right? And it makes you not have to get your gun out because you know, well, if I have to get my gun out right now, I can, I can go, right? I mean, I, I, I have the level of skill that I know if I need to, I can just get the gun out and I can go, right? That, that can work. The uh, maybe not so comforting part is, well, you should be putting in the work, right? You should be working to, to try to do that. And if you haven't dry fired in a week or a month, uh, you should do that. You should make a habit of dry fire. And when I say make a habit, I'm talking like five, 10 minutes a day here. Like we're not talking about a lot. Just doing some draws and some basic reloads and basic malfunctions is gonna go a long, long way. And I'm just talking about, well, today I'm just gonna draw for five minutes. And then tomorrow I'm just gonna work on reload for five minutes. And the day after that, I'm just gonna work for, you know, coming from low Reddit for five minutes. And then the day after that, you know, just stuff like that. Just a little bit every day, it's like learning a language. That's, man, at the end of the month, think about how much time you put in working on all those individual little different skills. A lot of time. And that's what makes a big difference. So when it comes to draw speed, do we need a blitzing fast draw? No, I mean, now if you're a competition shooter, okay, you know, that, that's gonna much more play into your, your thing, right? But if you're just an everyday guy like me, and you just carry your gun to save your life of yourself and your family and people you're with, do you need a .8 draw? And I would say no, not really. However, getting to a .8 draw ensures that whatever situation you're gonna encounter in life, your draw is gonna be adequate, okay? So the comforting thing is, if you don't have the .8 draw yet, that's fine, that's okay, keep working. And if you do, make sure you keep working because otherwise, of course, it's a perishable skill and you won't be able to get there as quick, right? So that's my thought on draw speed. That's my thought on practicing for draw speed. That's my thought on how I'm going to uh, teach draw speed, how I'm going to uh, practice my own personal draw speed, and what I can tell you to think about when it comes to how fast you really need to get the gun out. Uh, in, in a gunfight, there's no timer, right? The timer is the other person trying to kill you. That's the timer, right? So all you gotta be is faster than the other guy. Now, how fast is he gonna be? Well, you just don't know until it happens. I hope that's helpful. I hope that gives you something to think about. Draw faster, my boys. You're gonna need it. Do great beats. And then do it.